And here we are again oh, at boy. Cigar Ties. Yes, we are. I survived another No snide one. remarks. I Welcome back. Another no <laughs> fun and frivolity. Week two, our tat. <laughs> the world's number one <laughs> ranked. We should tats. record <laughs> how before. Yeah, number, we should, you on. know what? We should actually have a recording of how we get ready so they could see all the anguish that I go through. They definitely so you go through. Anger. <laughs> we have to listen anguish. to you. All of her our anguish. Love for you to speak Not your English. anguish. Yeah, she speaks anguish. We're very honored. Was that wrong please. again? We're very honored and pleased. Somebody get me a dictionary. I'm not going to say it a third time. <laughs> We're very pleased and honored. and honored to have Robin Schechter. Oh, well, excuse me, Robin Parsons. Schechter Parsons. Parsons, no back Schechter. with us, who Parsons. represents Villager Cigar in this name. part of the country. She's the executive sales manager for Villager. Uh, she Welcome was back. with us last week. We hope you saw the I show. I wish I was executive. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Northeast sales manager. Just, just, just a big time. Is that the Robin Parsons project? Yeah. That's what I said you didn't hear. Parsons in a pear tree. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, <laughs> thought Sorry I, I thought I would lead off the show today by pontificating. Oh, boy. Can we light up? Oh, yeah, light up. While, <laughs> while you're pontificating? <laughs> while I pontificate about Cuba. Ah. In the previous year or so, you heard me speak numerous times about my travels to Cuba, which are extensive. That's well, why he's I, wearing a hat. All legally. Hmm? All legally. All legally. Well, there was one. I was too fast. I couldn't get a license in time. But the statute of limitations, I'm sure, ran out a long time ago. Anyhow, Cuba's been in the news a lot because last month, uh, our president announced a easing. He lifted of, the embargo. No, no he, he did, did not <laughs> lift the embargo. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? Do you know how many people come up and say that to me? And well, we're talking about it. The and embargo like, is very heavy, and the only people that can lift it is the Congress. So it has not been lifted. In <laughs> fact, in fact, just so everybody realizes, not much has changed because when President Clinton went out of office and Bush the second came into office, the, there was a uh, ability. Believe me, I took advantage of it quite a bit of bringing back a hundred dollars mm -hmm. of Cuban cigars and Cuban rum, and four hundred dollars worth of uh, paintings, artwork, manuscripts, books, things like that. So Did that went away. Hmm? Did you have to show a receipt? Yeah, to leave the airport. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, actually, that just went away for about the last, I guess, 16, 17 years, and they reinstituted that. So, what has changed? Well, we now officially will have an embassy in Havana, which unofficially oh. we always had. The Swiss, Swiss embassy housed the American Special Interest section, which was originally the U.S. embassy. Mm -hmm. And now an American flag is flying in Cuba again, as is a Cuban flag flying in Washington. Nice. And the easing of some of the travel restrictions, although by no means, no means, you can just pick up, call your travel agent and fly to, fly to Cuba. It's a little more complicated than that. Also, uh, just so everybody realizes, there will be no immediate importation of Cuban cigars. There's an awful lot of hurdles to overcome in, in doing that. And the one major hurdle you never, ever hear the news reporters or anybody talk about is one of the most important ones. Uh, they can't grow enough food stuff to turn that soil over to allow for the planting of more cigars. The Cubans can make about 120 or 130 million premium cigars, and that's about it. And they're European... Middle Eastern, uh, South American, and Asian distributors soaked that all up. So it's not like they could just cut them all out, who have been supporting them for the last 50 years, and just turn it all over to America. America would probably sop up two or three hundred million cigars if, if they could. But the difficulty is the fields that would be required to plant more tobacco to make in the years forward cigars are currently growing things like soybeans and other foodstuffs for the Cuban people. Otherwise, the Cuban people wouldn't know what to eat. And to further complicate the matters, uh, the, the American know-how about exportation of agricultural products could mean an awful lot to Cuba because we have the ability to cheaply export into various countries, as we do all over the world, agricultural products. The difficulty the Cubans have at this point, they have no hard currency to speak of. So a lot of these problems will have to be overcome before they could actually make more cigars. They would actually have to buy 
the foodstuffs that are currently being grown there, they would have to buy them probably from America. And the good news about that is, although it won't be instantaneous, the American Chamber of Commerce and, and big business supports the lifting of the embargo and, and, in a sense, rebuilding Cuba. Because before the revolution, which most people, except old goats like me, remember, you know, Cuba was the number one island down there. And I've said many times over the years, if I were the, the uh, tourism minister of Jamaica or the Bahamas, I'd be polishing up my resume. Because when Cuba gets rebuilt, and that's going to be several generations before that happens, oh, well. when Cuba gets rebuilt, <laughs> I can tell you one and all, I, I, I believe nobody on this panel has been to Cuba. I've been there dozens of times. It is a vibrant island of well-educated, well-medicated people who, who yeah, love America. Oh, wow. <laughs> when they find out you're an American, they just get excited. It's the opposite of what most people would think. They love America. They all have relatives in this country. They'll give you names and phone numbers to call and, and keep in touch and things like that. So from a people-to-people -people standpoint, this has never, from my experience, has never been a problem. I've been all over Cuba. There's hardly a place I haven't been to. And I've never, ever encountered anti-American sentiment. Just the opposite. Some of the graffiti, especially in, in downtown Havana and along the waterway, the Malacom, has some graffiti that's anti-American and everything. And the Cuban people, as you walk with them, laugh at that because that's not their sentiment. This is a government-to-government -government problem, not a people-to-people -people problem. So I just want everybody to understand, you're not going to see a lot of Cuban cigars and humidors anytime soon. And to further, further complicate matters, there's a trademark problem. The, there are two companies that control most of the Cuban labels. And the one company, General Cigar, has uh, Punch, has Hoyo, has La Gloria Cubana, has Bolivar. What am I missing? Cohiba. Oh, that's the big one. Sancho Panza. And yet the other company, Altadis, which controls Romeo y Juliana, Monte Cristo, H. Upman. Juan Lopez. Yeah, Juan Lopez, which is a big, big brand, Juan Lopez. Counterfeiting problem. So, so he, the problem with that is the company that, that owns those brands, is, is called Altatus, is owned by the company that's a 50% partner with the Cuban government to produce all the Cuban cigars all over the world. So they've got to settle these trademark problems. I have my own philosophy that one company will buy the other company, and I'll leave it at that. And I've been saying that for years, and whether it comes true or not, I don't know. So between the replacement of agriculture to grow more tobacco and the trademark problems and the lifting of the embargo, that still has not, don't misunderstand, the embargo has not been lifted. Got it. Things have been eased, but it has not been lifted. So there's going to be no legal Cuban cigars flooding this country anytime soon. What you may soon see, as soon as the embargo is lifted, you may see some blended cigars. You may see some export of tobacco to places like Nicaragua and maybe the Dominican Republic and some, some of the old Andorian. Cubans who escaped the island. Andorian. <laughs> will blend cigars with, you know, I could just see a Nicaraguan and a Cuban cigar blended the old way, and that would be a very satisfying cigar. No more, no more Cuban seated. The other problem you're going to run into, Cuban cigars are not going to be cheap. <laughs> not, not after no. they lift the embargo. Well, they're, yeah. they're not cheap now. No, they're not cheap now. Really? In Cuba, they're not cheap. They're not cheap. So, so just, it's good news for the long term. It's, it's practically no news yeah. for the short term. Mm -hmm. so that's the, why one, the one good piece of news, I think, that, that our viewers will appreciate hearing is that when the embargo gets lifted and there are Cuban cigars coming into the United States, based on our collective relationship with those two companies you were talking about, will be amongst the first and best places for you to buy Cubans when that time comes. That's actually a very valid point. Yeah. We do, uh, in the Philadelphia metropolitan area, we are uh, obviously the largest chain, and like Paul says, we have a lot of clout with these companies. Yeah. We've been doing business with them for a long, long time, 
And uh, I like to say the preferred retailer. Well, we'd like to think about the preferred. <laughs> so let's let's say that they do lift the embargo tomorrow, and let's fast forward ten years, and we've got Cuban cigars on the shelves. What's, well, I think after, what is that? What, what's yeah, that going to mean? Well, to what, I, what I think it'll mean, I think, <laughs> and they've been being sold for ten years. No, it's ten, it, no. He's saying fast forward. It's ten years fast now. Fast forward ten years, they get past all the trademark the issues, and they figure out how to make more cigars. Okay, uh, I think I think what you're going to run into is a lot of people will will be turned off by the price, and unless the quality is more consistent, they have a lot of problems with consistent quality. Unless the quality is more consistent, I think a lot of people might be turned off by the cigars. I mean, I'll just be honest. I or, think, or, I, I, think, I, think I think they might use it more like. Anniversary gift people might buy. I think buy you're going to see it bastardized and mixed with all kinds of other stuff. I, that, yeah. That's what I, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. People don't realize that Cuban tobacco isn't the best tobacco I in the world. I love Nicaraguan tobacco. That's, that's, the, not that's the way it used to be. Well, well, the, the irony is it could be. That's all it is. <laughs> the irony is it could be. Hmm. But all the old masters escaped to places like mostly the Dominican Republic and then to Nicaragua. Right. So, you know. That has to be all worked out, and that by that time there aren't any blenders, young blenders who can do that. Yeah. What they used to do, and well, they're not going to be around there's anymore. There's a lot that has so you're to be done. They're, so they're, not, they're not going to be able to blend it's it the way they used to different. blend. Sales will go crazy on those things for the first year or two, yeah. and, and then that's it. Yeah, and then it'll die. It'll, it'll be another die. boom it'll, in the cigar it'll business. It'll be another X Y Z company. All right. Well, since we're on the subject of cigars, why don't we stick with that? Why doesn't the lovely Miss Tia tell us all about the cigar we're smoking now? And another hard name, but I think I'm going to do it right. This Take a stab at it. I'm going to try it. Cabarete? Yes. Yay! All right. Box Press Maduro. It's a Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan. <laughs> oh, I don't <laughs> believe Maduro. I'm just playing. A Cuban seeded Nicaraguan and Dominican Criollo 98 and a Corojo filler. Wow. So that is very interesting. Boy, this ought to light up all Paul's bills. It should light as bells. I'll give you a little history, too. Cabarete is an old shipping port in, in the Dominican Republic where they used to bring all the tobacco. Oh, is port. that why the band has the ship? Yep. Yeah, I was and wondering about ship. that. It's a beautiful beach. Yes, it's a beautiful band. I like that. Mm -hmm. Robin, do you know offhand, the, the binder is, well, the, the wrapper, I'm sorry, is a Nicaraguan Maduro. Do you know what kind of seed, you know, which which? Well, I, I mean, it's a, I'm not sure that exactly what you're asking, but I know it's a Cuban seed. I mean, all of the tobacco that we're using, I think, in this cigar is Cuban seed, with the exception of the Corojo tobacco. There's but some San we, we, we don't know offhand whether it's a, a, a Criollo Maduro or a Habano Maduro, or we're not sure which. I just know Nicaraguan Maduro. There are secrets behind this wrapper that I can't mm -hmm. talk about. But well, otherwise, you'd have to kill me. Kind of have to kill you. That. It might be fun. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll tell Scott. You. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott's expendable, so tell him. We can that. kill him. <laughs> well, all my problems down to just one. Yeah. <laughs> well, where to be buried? Yeah. We are In using Honduras. a really nice wrapper on this, though. It's, it's actually a you beautiful. Have it, several, that's why I was asking. It's a, yeah. it's a you have several wrapper. other lines of premium cigars. Briefly, tell us about some of the other lines. Sure, and these are the ones that are, we're including in the uh, specials yep. uh, for we'll the two weeks. We'll get to that in a minute. Yep. yep, we've got the, it, well, last, if you saw last week's show, we were smoking the Cuellar Creamy, um, and we have the Cabarete we're smoking this week, and uh, right in the front of Scott there is the Trill Cigars, which are all sort of like a family of cigars that are coming to us in a conjunction with uh, La Palma. Uh, in the Dominican Republic. That one's got a Habano wrapper, again, using the Criollo 98 and Corojo for the filler. Um, and those three are, will be part of the specials. They also have the 1888 limited edition uh, 2014 Especial. Uh, and there was, only Boy, that's a mouthful. there was only about 500 boxes or wow. 10,000 cigars. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. They're, they're very limited production. When they're gone, they're gone. I'm confused you with the facts. <laughs> I'm confused <laughs> with the facts, yeah, but that's a nice... Cigar also constructed in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it's different than all of our other 1888 lines. Uh, it's a little stronger, a little more robust, and only comes in one size, the Toro size, until they're gone okay. forever. Um, and we also have here uh, one of Cigar Aficionado's uh, best buys of 2014, which is the La Libertad. And that's a, a great uh, cigar with Dominican Nicaraguan fillers. Uh, and it's we the only, have them. We have them. The only yeah, cigar on the market with a Peruvian wrapper and binder, at well, least to my knowledge. Yeah. Really interesting. If uh, I always say if you're a fan of a good medium body mm -hmm. cigar, even though it doesn't have a Cameron wrapper, it's very comparable to I that of a Cameron cigar. Yep. 
like Cameroonian? We saw a lot of that while we were there. I did not say Cameroonian. I said Peruvian. I said Peruvian. Cameroonian. I see you're receiving your hairline today. I know. It's very receiving. Can we uh, get everybody's comments on their first impressions? I'll start with Scott. Um, I like this. I'm getting a little bit of, I think, espresso and also a real hint of licorice. Mm -hmm. Licorice. See that? Black or Black licorice. No metallic taste. Huh? (laughs) No metallic taste today. No. Paul? Don't don't look stupid. Don't look like that. I like this. It's... um, (laughs) It's got all of the things you'd expect from a, a good Maduro. A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of spice, a lot of body, but it's mellow. It's not an in-your-face kind of Maduro. Uh, a good amount of complexity. There's a lot going on in here. I, I like would this. guess this is a more pricey cigar. Uh, sort of like the 7 to 8 50, yeah. so right. just a hair okay. more than the Cuellar Creamy. Yeah, it's a little more, and right. And the trail's like in between the two of them. That's 6 7 Cool. Do you? I agree with everything Paul said. We can't let him go second anymore. He has to go last. He's doing, oh, <laughs> he done. says all the good stuff. You're done. <laughs> no, um, I agree I'm with everything Paul and me. Scott said. I love the rapper. The rapper is gorgeous. I love a good Maduro. Well, um, how about the band? We talked about the band earlier. We did, the band okay. was nice. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look, I you can't see off. it, but if you look at the ashes, you can see the crystals in the ashes, and I, I love that. You don't really get that a lot in certain Those Maduro crystals, cigars. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it in the acid. I love it. It's it's very good. Uh, Okay. Uh, I'm getting a a sweetness of the Maduro wrapper. I'm definitely getting that. I'm getting also a little toasty taste through the retro hail. And I am getting a little bit of the uh, black licorice that Scott mentioned earlier. So. Scale from one to ten? I'm getting that, yeah. Oh, this is our initial. Isn't this initial? I'm getting a little bit more red licorice. Is this this initial? Twizzlers or uh, red vine? Oh, my God. (laughs) Mass produced. No, actually, this this is a very nice medium-bodied cigar. It's a real Maduro. It tastes like a real Maduro. I'm right? getting the complexity. Uh, I love it. It really it. leaves a nice sweet finish on your mm-hmm. tongue. Mm-hmm. I mean, it completely really... different than the last. Right. Oh one. yeah. You see the nice difference day. on nice the day. palate. The one we saw last week. Very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. It's excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I say what we're going to be doing special-wise. Scott, why don't you tell us the remaining events? Ooh, more uh, events. Actually, we've got the lion's share of events this week. Oh, uh, good. This okay. Thursday, uh, Robin's, this thurs- Thursday the 29th, Robin's going to be in Freehold from 12 to 3, and then shift <laughs> over to Oxford Valley from 5 to 8. Um, and then Friday the 30th, in Horsham right here from 12 to 3, and then in Colmar from 5 to 8. The party store. Nice. The party store, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we're, what we're going to be running, <laughs> what we're going to be running, which we started last week, what we're going to be running is buy any four Vilger cigars, and you'll get two more free at the counter. You it buy four, right up, does it? get, what's no. that? No. <laughs> Just checking. But you can upsell yourself on them. We, yeah. saw, we actually saw a lot of boxes. We do. Cool boxes. Yeah. Cool well, boxes. We're talking for the premium cigars. Yeah. Plus, oh, God. We still have some remaining boxes that we announced last week. Not many of left. The Vil- there's not that many left of the Vilger Dominicana, uh, both in Corona size and Robusto size, which is great for the cold weather smokers. Uh, these boxes were originally 75 to $90, and to the shock and dismay of many of the people yeah. right uh, and left of me. I say we go to $29.99 now. No, no, no. Indian no. no. I, I said 1995 last Can't week, and that. until they're gone, Nineteen ninety-five will remain. I thought you were going to get a nine ninety-five. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Well, now I'm not, that's called not Alzheimer's. That if that happens. So you get twenty-five <laughs> premium cigars for basically a little less than eighty cents a piece. So uh, I don't know how you know they're they're flying. So limit ten, no customer, no dealers, please. Uh, we hope you'll turn out and uh, support Bilger, support us, support yourselves, save some money, enjoy some smoking. Oh yeah, Valentine's Day's coming. That's a good, great, a uh, great present for Valentine's. Yeah, great Valentine's gift to your sweetheart. Nice red box. Not for the sweetheart. For the sweetheart to give to her sweetheart. I'll give you a tip though. Oh, you you can smoke the cigars and give your wife the box because cigar boxes yeah. will help your silver jewelry from tarnishing. Look at that. Aha, uh-huh. uh-huh. the cedar. We learn yeah. something every day. Oh, yeah. well, there yeah. you go. Every day. Mm-hmm. I keep my jewelry in, so I know that. I, do I think too. Paul has something to say. <laughs> Paul always has something to say. Go Ooh, ahead, Paul. Is it Paul in the no, humidor today? Oh, you, want, you want me to go in the, in the in humidor? The humidor yeah. yeah, I can do yeah. that. <laughs> Just gently. 
Gently. Gently. I want to talk about humidification. It is in the humidor. I want to talk about a little bit about humidification today. Uh, you know, maybe some of you got new humidors over Christmas. Maybe you already had one. Uh, there are these days more options for how to keep your cigars fresh and properly humidified than there have ever been before. Uh, Putting them in the refrigerator is not one of them. Not absolutely not. And if you want, I can explain how that came to be an idea and why it's not a good idea anymore. On another show. On another show. But I want to start with what you probably got with your humidor, and this is an old school humidification device. You can see it's a round piece of plastic with some holes in it. And if you opened it up inside, it's got what's called floral foam, and that just absorbs moisture and lets it back out gradually. Um, those come like this. They usually have a, a magnet on the back to attach. This is essentially just a bigger version of the same thing for a larger humidor. But there are some other new options, some not so new, that are really good and worth taking a look at. Uh, one of them are these jars of uh, crystals. And these, these are superior to the foam kind for a simple reason. The crystals in here absorb moisture and release it but it's an active process instead of a passive one. What I mean is when the humidity in your humidor goes down, they release more humidity. But if the humidity in your humidor goes up, they absorb more. Mm -hmm. So it's back and forth. And essentially, you just take the cover off of a jar like this, and it's got a little lid on it with holes. You put it right in your humidor, and that's all you need to do uh, for several months until the uh, crystals shrink down to the refill point, and then you add uh, solution or distilled water, and I'll talk about the solution in a minute, but you add distilled water or solution till it refills. And these are very simple, low maintenance, and not expensive. It's easy, too, because you know when it needs to be filled, as opposed to something like this, when you're just not, you have to right. wait until the humidity goes down. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and then you're already in trouble. Exactly. Uh, this is something along the same lines. It's got crystals in it also. Um, it's just shaped differently. It's maybe good for a travel humidor or uh, case. if you just want to, in a flat case, yeah. or if you just want to put it in your humidor lined up along with your cigars. One of the most popular methods these days, this is a small one, but they come in larger sizes, are these little uh, Bovida or Bovida envelopes. And you don't do anything with them except throw them in your humidor or in your travel pack, and they're good for about a month, I would say. They're inexpensive, they are zero maintenance. You don't yeah. open them, you don't play with them, you don't do anything, and as soon as it gets a little hard, you throw it out and get another one. Then they, they come in, very, they come in what, 69%, 72%, 72%. and then it's like an 85 yeah, for seasoning in the humidor. So you, you can pick the body. ones you need depending yeah. on what your purpose is. Now, I mentioned solution, and I just want to show you wh what that is. This is Uncle Max's solution, but uh, essentially, in any of these devices, you never want to use tap water. You would primarily use distilled water because the minerals in tap water clog up the pores in the uh, foam, or they interact badly with the crystals. So distilled water or a solution like this, which is distilled water and propylene glycol, uh, it doesn't get in your cigar. It's not like you're, you're ingesting propylene glycol, even though that's not a bad thing anyway. But um, what this does is control the pace at which humidity goes in and out. So it keeps everything more evenly balanced. And that's really important because if your humidity spikes up and down, that's going to be a shock to the cigar. That's bad news. Like, that is bad news. I like news. the solution, too, because I, I, it also mm -hmm. helps to prevent the growth of mold. mold yes, yeah. Yeah. Right. I, yes, I, I always recommend using the solution right. over distilled water. So do I. I only recommend distilled water for seasoning your humidor. That's it. Now, let's that's say, mm -hmm. let's say that you haven't done any of these things properly, and your cigar loses its humidity, and you get what I like to call Ooh, ooh. A crunchy Aww. cigar. Do that up near your microphone. God. <laughs> um, that's, it's a horrible thing. By the way, I left this cigar out of the humidor for a few days. You won't find cigars like this in our humidors no. for sure. Um, but we do get asked very often, 
if a cigar dries out, can you bring it back? Well, why don't we save that for another show? Okay. I can do that. We're running out That's of called time. a teaser. Yeah. We'll save that for <laughs> another show because we need to rate this cigar. People love it when I pull a plug. Yeah, start it out. <laughs> Just go with the number. I'm giving this one an, uh, an 8.5. Again, the, the licorice and the espresso still continued. Smooth cigar. <clears throat> medium bodied. Um, very, very good. 8.5. Paul? I'm going 9 on this one. Hello. I really like wow. it. Do you? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with an 8 on this one. I'm not getting the uh, espresso. I get cocoa. Did I say I finally get cocoa? I get cocoa. Rob? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm going to go 825 on this one. <laughs> Are we playing prices right here, me? Yeah. <laughs> He's always kind of go a little I'm high. giving it a solid nine. I really <laughs> like this cigar. Good. It's an excellent cigar. And the price isn't bad at all. No, it's a nice price. Just want to remind everybody, you know, we have 10 stores scattered all over the area, but also in between our stores, whatever, where you live, if one of our stores isn't there, please support your local brick and mortar cigar store. This time of year, they offer you a lounge to sit and smoke in the cold weather, and it's just the right thing to do. You know, small business people, you know, need your support. It isn't all the yeah. big box stores. Yeah, they're all family-owned stores, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to support Main Street. Yes. So, uh, what did I forget? Did I forget anything? And plug our social media. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. go ahead and plug it. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Robin Cigar. That's Robin with a Y, Cigar with an I. Uh, or you can check out our uh, Villiger pages on um, Instagram. It's at Trill Cigars and also at Villiger Cigars, and that's V-I-L-L-I-G-E-R. Uh, you can also go on Facebook and find us at Villiger Cigars North America and on Twitter at Villiger Cigars as well. Well, Robin, we appreciate very much you spending this two weeks with us. Oh, thanks. And uh, I know uh, you brought us some great cigars. Appreciate you yeah. smoking them. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys liked them. Yeah, you know, again, I said, I know I said it last week, but Vilger is is a household name in the dry cure European markets, Asian market, but in the premium cigar business, they're relatively new and not exactly a household brand yet. Close, we're getting there. We're getting We've there. We've got a lot of publicity rocking in the magazines. We've yeah, been in the Cigar yeah. Snob and the Cigar and Spirits magazine. My favorite. That's favorite. She That's loves also the Calibra. One of my favorites she too. She loves the Calibra. My favorite. <laughs> well, we hope you'll come in and take advantage of the specials that we're offering, the 1995 red boxes, as we call them, and look for Robin at an event because she's going to be bringing all kinds of neat stuff with her. Oh, so, yeah, Adol, it's time to say goodbye. Life's too short to smoke cheap cigars, and hi, mom. Whatever happened to MySpace? Oh my God! What I, I still what? have a MySpace. I used to have a lot of friends. On that. Okay, people, smoke often and smoke happy. Smoking, a, smoke an awesome cigar. Make it a villager. Well done. Right. Well done. A gratuitous yeah, plug if I ever heard. Uh, bye bye for now. Hi, Dad, Mom. <laughs> Ciao for now, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the cast and crew of Cigar Time, we want to thank you very much for making our show a very successful show, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Oh, bye. -bye. Ciao. Oh, bye. <laughs>